Hello again, this is Kyle. Instead of writing code today, let's deploy some code. So as you can see here, I've got my typical development setup going here, and I've made this awesome website that blinks, hooray bears. And as you can see here, what it simply does is it queries this uh, h1 tag here uh, and grabs that, and then it calls this blink function and then changes the opacity between zero and one uh, every second and creates this nice little blink effect. And you see here I have my script source set to bundle.js. Uh, my entry point though is named index.js and that's because Budo we can specify the entry point, that's the place that it's gonna start off, and then as well as the final script. So now we're, we're, we're ready to deploy this and share this uh, awesome website with the world. And so what we wanna do is we wanna create this bundle.js uh, so we can push it out to the server. And so I have Browserfied installed on my computer. You can install it on your computer if you have NPM by doing NPM install Browserfy, and you can do dash G to install it globally so it, the command will be available to you uh, on your machine. And so I'm gonna type Browserfy here. I'm gonna give it our entry points, and then I'm gonna specify the file we're gonna write out to and it'll be bundle.js here. And so now we have this bundle.js. So when we deploy it, our index.html is still gonna point to this bundle.js and we actually have this physical static asset available. Now there are many ways to deploy code to a remote server. Uh, my preferred way is using git. Now you may or may not know, uh, git uh, doesn't just push code to GitHub. Um, in fact, you can push code or pull code from any computer uh, as long as it, both of the computers have Git installed. And so my uh, remote server here, my, my web server here, root at don't cry, um, has Git installed. So what we want to do is we want to set up a, uh, a location so that we can push code to and pull code for if we, if we need it to uh, to the remote server. Um, so what I'm going to do is in here uh, in the VAR um, repo folder, uh, I'm going to set up a, um, a folder that we can push to. So we will call, we will we'll make this directory, we'll call it bears.dontcry.com. And you can prepend the .git if you want to, it's not necessary, but we'll do it. Um, and so we just created this folder here, this empty folder. And what we want to do is we want to initialize this as a git repo, a git folder. And so we'll say git init, but we'll do dash dash uh, bear here. Now not bear the animal, uh, B-A-R-E instead. And what this will do is it will initialize this repo, but it won't actually contain any of the source code when we push to it, just the versions of, uh, of each of the time you push to it. Uh, so this is important because we don't actually want the code to live in this uh, ver repo folder. Likely, uh, you have the actual source code of your website in another folder. Uh, for in, in my case, I have all of my uh, my websites in a ver uh, www folder uh, instead, and this is where actually uh, my server uh, hosts or serves all of my files from. So what we want to do is now that we have a repo that we can push to. We needed to set it up to actually make the files that we have pushed live in this other folder, this uh, this www folder. And so what I want to do is here uh, in this repo folder, um, there's a another folder called hooks that uh, the git init has created for us. So we're going to go in here, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a hook uh, called uh, post receive. And so Git has many hooks that it can call um, after uh, at different stages. The post receive is basically after you after it has received uh, pushed code, it's going to uh, fire this hook. And this is just a uh, a bash shell. And so what we can do is we can just uh, add a whoops. If I can learn how to use Vim here, uh, there we go. Um, so we are going to do a shebang here. Shebang here, why isn't my keyboard working? There we go, okay, bin.sh. Uh, so this is just a, uh, a bash script. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say git work dash tree. This will be the tree, this will be the location of where we want to actually deploy our code. And so in our case, we'll say bears.don'tcry. We'll, we'll create this folder in var www. And the git tree, uh, or the git dir rather, 
um, is going to be ver repo bears dot don't cry dot com dot get and then we'll check out that code and dash f to force it so what this will do is every time we push code uh, to our repo it's going to check out the last copy of it uh, last all the all the files into our uh, bears www uh, bears dot don't cry dot com folder now this would be a good place that if you need to do any other kinds of things after you've pushed new code, such as maybe restart your server or restart some kind of API service or whatnot, uh, you can do it here as well. So we're gonna go write this file. And then what we need to do is we need to give it executable permissions. So we'll say change mod plus X uh, post receive. So that way it can be executed uh, by the operating system. Hooray, we can now push code to our server, our remote server, from anywhere or any computer that has uh, permissions to access it. So now I can exit out of my remote server and go to my, uh, my local copy of the code here. Um, and so what I want to do now is I want to init this as a, um, a Git repository as well. And this will be the Git repository that manages my local files and I can push it up to the remote server here. Uh, so one file I'm going to want to create is uh, a dot git ignore and this basically just says if I can spell it right this basically lists the types of files that we want to ignore and so the good ones uh, straight off the bat here uh, we can ignore the node modules because we don't want to push up all the node modules but you know maybe your your website or your deploy needs the node modules so uh, you, you know configure that as needed now in order to configure git to allow us or to push code to this remote server we need to tell it where it is and so we can do that with git remote add and I'm going to name it live because I like to know when I'm going to be pushing code live that I, I, I've I named it live. I, don't, I didn't name it upstream. I didn't name it server. You can name it whatever you want. I like to name it live. And so since I have um, SSH access to the server, I'm going to use SSH to push. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide the full path to the server, so to the repo that we'll be pushing to. So that'll be VAR uh, repo bears.dontcry.com.git and so what I have done is I've added this uh, this live uh, uh, target this live remote that I can push to so now all we need to do is add some code so I could do that with git add dot and now we have uh, all of these files staged and ready to be pushed and so I can commit them and say publish bears site and so now I have all these files committed, I can finally push them live by saying git push live, and then we're on the master branch, which is the default branch here. So if I'm, I'm gonna push this master branch to our live remote, and then that post receive hook is gonna fire and move the files to the correct location on our server, and hopefully we should see them. There we go, now let's check. We're gonna go to bears.dontcry.com, Hooray, bears. So now maybe sometime later you're going to, and you're, you're, you're editing your website and you've made some changes. So we'll say totally new version. And we're testing it here. Uh, let's do npm start. And we're, we're developing this website locally. And we're like, okay, a totally new version. That, that is a totally new version. We're happy with that. And we're ready to deploy this, to push it up to our remote server. All we need to do is we can say git status. And we say okay, modif you know uh, the index.file is uh, modified. We say what's changed? Okay, hooray bears changed a totally new version. So let's just go ahead and add that index.html file, and we'll commit that and say totally new version. And then all we have to do is say git push live master, and this will push that code up to our server. And so which we can go here and refresh. And we have now a totally new version. But now you go to the website, bears.don'tcry.com, and you notice that it says totally new version when it should say hooray bears, of course. That's a mistake, we shouldn't have pushed that. So what we can do here is we can go git log and see what's going on. Oh, here's where totally new version was introduced. And we can go ahead and do all kinds of git magic to reset that state, but the easiest way, in my opinion, is to just revert that commit, that uh, that offending commit, that commit we don't like, by copying this commit uh, SHA or ID here and typing in git revert and pasting that in. And this will create a new commit that reverts that last commit. 
and in which we can in a hurry pace we can say git push live master and fix that that awful change that we made here and we refresh the page and we now have the correct hooray bears on our website so I hope this has helped you learn how to use Git to deploy your website. And if it has, then please share the videos and help other people learn how to use Git. Uh, and if you want to see more videos, then please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.